We will begin looking at text structure in informational text. As we read, try and notice how it is written. To review, the five different types of text structure in informative writing are problem and solution, descriptive, compare and contrast, sequential and chronological, and cause and effect. As we look at today's article on shaky ground by Emily Grecki, we're going to first look at the vocabulary. The first word we have is trigger, and the meaning of trigger is to make something start or begin. The next word we have is predict, to say something that will happen in the future. On your own, please fill in the blanks under the vocabulary words on page 230. The next thing we're going to do, even before we read, is to look at the close reading questions on page 231. The first question by the key ideas said, what hap can happen when the Earth's plate moves? So we have to think about what's the important part of that question to help us remember what to think about when we read. So what can happen when Earth's plate move? I think the important parts of that question is Earth's plate move and happen. So when I just read, I want to look for those, those words and those ideas to help me answer the question. The next thing is, what is the main idea of the section, big explosions, big waves? And they want you to underline two details that support your response. So I already know that when I come to the paragraph, big explosions, big waves, I'm going to look for two details that support the main idea. So in fact, I'm going to go to the story right now, and I'm going to highlight that title because I know that's something important that I need to use to answer the question. I'm also going to think as I'm reading this, how is this structure set up? Is it going to be descriptive where it just describes what's going on or it gives descriptions of specific items? Or is it compare and contrast where it's comparing and contrasting two things to explain it? Is it problem and solution where there's a problem that needs to be solved? Is it cause and effect where something happens and it discusses the effect of that? Or is it chronological or sequential, where it's telling how something happens in order? Now I'll begin reading. On shaky ground, the ground under your feet is moving right now. How? Moving plates. The Earth's surface or crust is broken up into many huge pieces called plates. The plates fit together like a giant puzzle. They are always moving but they usually only move about as fast as your fingernails grow. The place where two plates meet is called a fault. Sometimes two plates get stuck together along a fault. The plates try to move, but they cannot. Pressure builds up, suddenly they slip free. What happens next? The ground shakes. This is an earthquake. So I'm looking at the diagram. What causes a quake? The Earth's plates float on hot rock. They're always moving. And I'm looking at the crust right here and the hot rock in the Earth. When two plates get stuck, pressure builds up and happens when the plates slip free. Okay, so I'm looking at the diagram here to see how they rub together. The movement triggers an earthquake. So this, although this is showing the order in which it happens, this is a diagram which indicates to me that it's describing something. So I am getting an idea that this might be a descriptive, informative piece. Okay, so my first question is what can happen when the Earth's plate move? So I believe that when I look here, I see first of all the word happens, what happens next, and here it's talking about how the plates are moving. The plates try to move. I believe my answer to question one will be in this paragraph here. Now I'm going to read big explosions, big waves. Shifting plates can also make volcanoes erupt. Hot melted rock called lava and gases form below the Earth's surface, explode through the Earth's crust. Eruptions such as ash, rock, and gas shooting into the air. Volcanoes and undersea earthquakes can trigger giant waves called tsunamis. Some tsunamis can be 30 feet tall. The waves can move as fast as a jet. 
they can travel thousands of miles in just a few hours. What happens when a tsunami crashes on land? It can sweep away things in its path. Tsunamis can cause terrible destruction. So as I'm looking at this paragraph, I see that it's talking about two things. In the first paragraph, in the first sentence, it's talking about the volcanoes erupting. The second paragraph, the second, the first sentence, it's talking about tsunamis and how both the volcanoes and tsunamis are affected by the Earth's movement. So I believe that that is going to be my key details to underline my main idea. Now, be prepared. When will the next earthquake, volcano, or tsunami happen? It is difficult to predict when plates will get stuck and slip free, but new technology might help experts predict when an earthquake, volcano, or tsunami will occur. This will help us be prepared for the next time the earth shakes beneath our feet. Now please fill in your answers for the two questions on page 231 from what we just discussed.